All right, legends, welcome back. So right now we're talking about adding images in our Final Cut Pro projects, whether it's a background image or maybe we just want it to be a cool graphic. Uh, but in this video, I want to distinguish uh, the difference between a JPEG and a PNG. Now, I have a PNG right here and I have a JPEG right here. Let's look at the difference. So right here, I'm going to drag this above my background right here of the beach and see that it looks pretty darn good. Yeah, we can scale it. Make sure you're uh, on the transform tool. We can grab it and we can move it around. That's why I said in the last video, it's always better to pull in a bigger image and scale it smaller as opposed to a smaller image you find on Google images or something. And then making it bigger because that way it's going to look pixelated. It could look pixelated. So that looks pretty good, right? So we've got an image on top of our background image just like that. But what happens if we pull in a JPEG? So I'm gonna delete that. And let's go ahead and pull the JPEG in. JPEG, chances are it's gonna have this background stuff. And unless you have Photoshop and you, you have like the background erase tool or something, uh, it's gonna be annoying. All this white right here in the foreground is taking up too much room of our background, our background image. And Again, you can use that in Photoshop if you have that. Use the background erase tool. If you don't have it, what I do is when I search images on Google, I just type in whatever image I want and then PNG after. So I'll type in like uh, Freddy's hand, Freddy Krueger glove, PNG. As you can see, it's auto-populated because I recently searched that. Now, just like that. So let's click on images for Freddy Krueger glove.png. And the chances are... This is how you tell. Everything looks white right now, right? It looks like a JPEG. Well, let's click on it. If it's got that grid back there, you see it looks like that checkerboard. That means there's no white background. That means it's gonna take the image as is. There's no white background. So I recommend using PNGs. Let's go ahead and click around again. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And I always look at the background image. Okay, this one I would not use. I would not use because the white would show up as well. So click on it, make sure, see just like that. That's clearly a PNG with, it's got no background. This image is transparent. And let's go ahead and prove it. So save image, we'll call it Freddy three, Freddy F3, nope, caps locked. And let's go ahead and pull it in right now. Let's go to stills and let's just do shortcut command I and we saved it to our desktop. It was just called Freddy, Freddy three, just like that. There it is. So let's go ahead and grab this. I'll get rid of the PNG. I'm sorry. I'll get rid of the JPEG right here and let's delete that. Now let's go ahead and pull this in and scouts honor. There should be no background. It should just be the glove. Perfect. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and scale it. And so this could help out. Um, I mean, it could clearly help out. It might be very frustrating to pull in JPEGs and try to keep up with somebody on a YouTube tutorial and you're like, what the heck? I'm keep, I keep getting this background and stuff like that. So that's kind of the gist. Quick video on this. I wanna talk about more about creating animations and moving uh, images around throughout a video. So if you're giving a presentation and maybe you move your hand, you can create like a magic wand effect. So keep watching, good luck with this, and hopefully this differentiated the difference between a JPEG versus a PNG. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.